Hello, my name is Jordan, and welcome to the return of the Draftables, the best VGC Draft League analysis series that exists, unless you can think of another one. This is my most requested topic, the thing that has changed the most about Draft Leagues in the past year, and we're likely to be using it for years to come, which is terrestrialization. I wanted to wait until I felt comfortable enough in the new format to analyze and draw some conclusions, but I'm ready, baby. Terrestrialization has changed the game in so many ways, so many new strategies, so many new considerations, and if you've been playing Pokemon in any capacity in the past 20 years, You've got to update your knowledge of what are the good types and what are the bad types if you want to start or keep winning. Uh, Steel type is no longer a top tier type. Uh, That is so generation eight. Um, We're going to be talking about how to build teams that keep people guessing, that win terrestrialization wars, uh, drafting teams that take great advantage of terrestrialization, uh, and some higher level conclusions if I can get to them. If you like this kind of content, please leave a like, comment below, subscription, share in your Discord. Share to Reddit. I'd really appreciate it. This is the best way to play Pokemon, and I want to grow the scene as much as I'm capable, so let's get into it. Quick who am I before we continue in case this reaches new people. I just won a Gen 9 Draft League. I codenamed it Flutter Mouse. There are live commentaries on this channel. My current Draft League team I named Wet Future. It is 10-0 so far. I haven't dropped a game. I could definitely lose next week. I definitely could have lost some of these games. There's plenty of luck in this game, um, but when there's a string of wins like this, maybe there's something to impart, so I'm going to share what I can share. I've been playing this game for a little over two years. Um, I have 16 other draftables analysis videos on this channel. I'm not the best player. I'm looking at you, Tay, Poppin, the other people that tend to beat me in the VBL. But the effort is here. There is something to be gained, even if you're already a very good player, to uh, organize your thoughts like this and try to draw conclusions from there. So let's go. Um, I'm going to assume you look up terrestrialization, you can pause and Google anytime, but why do you Terra? You Terra in order to live hits you're not supposed to, to get KOs you're not supposed to, and then there's this amorphous third category, the, the inherent gifts of being certain types, it's just beyond the type chart at this point. All grass types are immune to sleep powder, they're immune to rage powder, they're immune to leech seed, and that's a reason to become a grass type, not just its resistance to water, but its resistance to some important game-changing moves. Um, This is a lot here. Let's maybe start with some of the most important secondary effects of being a certain type. Such a gift to physical attackers, their ability to become fire type and become immune to burn so that they don't get neutralized in that regard. Um, So that's really, really nice mix-up to potentially have. Becoming a ghost type not only makes you immune to normal type moves, it makes you immune to some key moves in this game, like fake out, feint, uh, getting locked in uh, from switching by shadow tag, um, being immune to all the pranksters out there, which are all good Pokemon if they've got the ability Prankster. You're immune to them if if you have the dark type. And then there are some of these that are a little bit less important, but uh, it's it's secondary benefits to consider why you might want to become these types and not these boring types that don't really have secondary effects. But you can build a whole sun mode out of sun boosted Terra Blast fires. You really can. Um, Just knowing that there's, there's more synergies beyond what you see among the fire types. There's all the new fire types you can create for yourself. You can add to your sand mode by just creating different mods of these types that become immune to sand uh, sandstorm damage. So it's a, things you, you want to consider. And then looking at all of these gifts of becoming certain types, one of my first conclusions, uh, one of my main conclusions here is that the ground type is totally overpowered. It was already one of the best offensive types being immune to or being strong against five generally good types. But all these gifts, all these types that you want to terrestrialize into, it just makes you weak to ground, right? I want to become a fire type so that I'm immune to burns. I have more ground weaknesses now. Ground is even better in the age of terrestrialization, but we're gonna get more into that as we go in. One point to color your understanding of terrestrialization is my theory that in high-level matches, most of your terras should have defensive value. They can have offensive value too, but the defensive value is more important. Um, A water type terra watering gets 30% more power. They get 50% more power if you become a fighting type before you close combat. That's good. Sometimes it gets you the KO that you're not supposed to get, having, you know, 50% more actions that turn. But defensive swings can be huge, right? Going from weak to an attack to resistant is a four times less damage than your opponent was expecting to get. Um, With defensive terrestrializations, you can nullify their turn entirely, right? Becoming a ground type before the electric move comes in, they do nothing that turn. And then you can click Dragon Dance, start your sweep, click Trick Room, start your trick room sweep, um, become immune to leech seed or to will-o'-wisp or to prankster and do whatever you want. Um, If you're making good use of your actions, the ability to just win an entire turn is usually very impactful. 
So understanding that this game is offensively oriented, that most of the changes that they've made to Pokemon in the past 20 years have been trying to make the game more fast-paced, uh, lots of cannons introduced to this game, Dynamax was more offensively oriented, Z-moves up to the pace of the game, um, making recovery moves, only eight usage, pretty good. They wanted this game to not become a stall fest, so knowing that there are all these Pokemon that can generally just get two shots on whatever they want, Garchomp, Fluttermane, Chiyu, Chan Pao, etc. They're all here and they can win you the game and all they need to do is not die. And that's why defensive terrestrialization should be the default for them. Just becoming a random type. Spin the wheel, become a poison type, become a fairy type, um, and it's going to be hard to get rid of them quickly, at least on that turn when they become a different type. Um, you can have both. That's pretty nice. When Fluttermane becomes a fire type, it's not only allowing itself to not die, not to steal moves, but it's also powering up its mystical fire. That's nice. I think the default, though, is just becoming a type without a lot of weaknesses. Why not? If Garchomp has the power and it has the, the bulk, then it just needs to not have a lot of weaknesses, and so becoming a fairy type, it will never be surprised by an ice move. Um, fairy is just generally good. The Age of Terror will create more fairies because a lot of months don't have steel or poison coverage. Um, a lot of teams aren't particularly weak to steel or poison moves. They aren't particularly strong offensive moves. Sometimes in team preview, when you're building for a match, you should just say, I'm fighting these 11 Pokemon and one or two random fairy types. There will be fairy types. There will be poison types, too, as another good defensive typing. Um, so knowing they're only weak to Psychic and Ground, and Psychic isn't even a factor that often as an offensive type, so you mainly have to worry about the ground. Electric only has to worry about the ground. It's its only weakness, which is exacerbating the imbalance that we've noticed here, is that becoming good defensive types, like Electric, Poison, Fire 2, just makes you more and more weak to ground. And so... It's not, a, it's not a problem that the game is asymmetrical, but it's something that we have to be aware of when we're building teams, um, when we're drafting teams, so that we don't make ourselves um, so attractive to just spam ground moves against us every week. Um, so that's, I think, one of the important things. All of these types have resistances, and so therefore they have defensive value, even rock and grass, but you're going to see more of the more solid defensive types on at least those sweepers, those very high base stat mods that all they need is to not die. So once you understand that good opponents are frequently going for those defensive terrestrializations, that they're looking to resist or be immune entirely to one of your moves, you should probably be throwing out moves that nothing is immune to. Eight of the types uh, are immune by another type. You know, a normal is not great to have be a not mono normal attacker because anything can tear a ghost and then you can't do anything to touch it. Um, at least you can see that with abilities, Flash Fire, Storm Drain, Sap Sipper, um, whether you're facing an opponent that has the potential to be immune to fire, water, grass, but nothing is immune to these seven types here. So rock moves, just throw out a rock move, you're terror-proof, you will do some damage. Same thing with fairy and flying, nothing is immune to these moves. Um, so if you become terror, rock, stone edge, you'll probably do your 30% that you need even if uh, there's a terror incoming. So these are more splashable attacking types. If you're going to have a mono one attack mon, it probably shouldn't be electric considering all of the terror grounds that are possible it should maybe be one of these if you were just having one attack on your mon. And so I think it's time to talk about the elephants in the room, the ground type. I think Game Freak understands how great ground types are. Uh, they kept a lot of the best ground types out of VGC 2023. Lando's probably coming back next year. Um, high horsepower is not is out of most mons and movesets at this point. The most consistent physical ground move. Um, so there's a huge difference between the best ground types that remain and like the 10th or 15th best ground types. Somebody's going to want to have Wishcat or Donphan to not have no ground types, but they're a lot less good than Garchomp, Great Tusk, Ting Lu. So you're gonna really want to prioritize drafting a top ground type if you want to, if you want one. And then others will, other teams will just have to make their own ground types. So Terra Ground Earth Earthquake is very viable. There's so many strong physical attackers with Earthquake, and so Haxorus is an honorary Terra Ground, Roaring Boo, an honorary Terra Ground type now. This is an out-of-the-box combo that most teams will have access to. A strong physical attacker next to a bird with Tailwind. It's very fast, it makes sure that the Earthquaker is also very fast, and it, every time you're making a build, think to yourself, am I weak to a fast Earthquake? Because if the answer is yes, if you really don't have any answer to that, you gotta change your build, because this is a very frequent combo that's gonna pop up. It's big, particularly with the option to Terra Ground. 
big feature here. Amon that's doing really well in the Terra era. They should definitely not sleep on Sandy Shocks. It's a new Mon, a Paradox Mon. I think he probably could ex have expected it to be good because it's got very high stats. Um, it's got a cool ability, and they're making Mons more com with comp competitive more in mind these days. So they all tend to get unique tools, unique gifts. Um, not only is Sandy Shock strong, but it's fast and bulky and has probably one of the best, most reliable moves in the entire game. Um, a special ground type that always hits, that can reduce their defense even further. Very few things like to take an Earth Power, and then the birds that like to take the Earth Tower are weak to Thunderbolt. The main hole in Sandy Shock's dual stab coverage is grass types that resist both of these. So I've, I drafted Sandy Shocks in my Flutter Mouse League. It became my kill leader. I frequently brought the Terra Blast. Terra Blast Fire to beat those grasses. Terra Blast Ice. Why not? Terra Blast Flying. Lots of ways to deal with your one weakness, or you can just draft a team around it that's full of anti-grass um, Pokemon. But not only is this Mon a very consistent attacker, but it's got plenty of value as a support Mon, as a hybrid attacker and support, because it can set screens pretty fast, um, particularly with speed booster energy. Um, it can cut uh, opponent speed to do a kind of combo play. Gravity, this is the best gravity setter ever, as far as I know. Um, so that can synergize with a couple of strats with, uh, with inaccurate moves that all of a sudden always hit. Your impulse is valuable. Like, Iron Defense Body Press is an option. Um, I'm gonna showcase this mod. Give me a minute, I'm gonna show you some sets of why this is such an excellent Pokemon. Building for Sandy Shocks, and for that matter, many of the Paradox Mons, their great gift is the ability to use booster energy for speed, to become 50% faster without being locked into a move like Choice Scarf does for you. So Sandy Shocks is faster than all Pokemon without speed boosts of their own or the Choice Scarf. Um, and so knowing that it can throw out these very fast Earth Powers that most Mons struggle to take well, and the few that do either struggle to Terra Blast or their Grass types, and then you just have that Terra Blast just for the Grass types, Terra Blast flying, Terra Blast, Fire, Ice, Bug, Poison, why not? Um, when you have a strong ground move, then you have space on your move set to hit the few things that ground can't hit with a Terra Blast. So, um, Sandy Shocks is not the fastest Paradox Mon. You gotta worry about the Paradoxy Paradox matchup there, um, but it's faster than all base hundreds with a Scarf, why not? This is a Mon that's bulkier than the majority fully evolved Pokemon with 85, 97, 85 defensive stats. So you just make it a fairy type and it is living one, two hits pretty easily. Um, so you have the earth power and then you have space for, if not a Terra Blast, a random support move. Gravity is a pretty rare gift to have. This is the best Mon with gravity. And then your Zap Cannons are 87% accurate and very strong and paralyze them. So you got speed control there. And so you don't even need to be fast when you can live hits and when you can be powerful. Um, this is a Mon that's kind of got everything, and that's what I want in Draft League in general, is the Mon that can be built very differently from week to week. Um, support oriented is entirely reasonable. Why not max bulk? And then the special attackers lose to Eerie Impulse, um, because uninvested Earth Powers, still pretty good. Um, this Mon is going to be faster than anything after it, you double its speed relative to the opponent by paralyzing them. Um, so definitely plenty of utility. Um, and then this is a set, AV is great. Um, it doesn't need four attacking slots, but sometimes you just want to be 50% more bulky on the Spidef side. This is exactly the set that I used um, when I drafted Sandy Shocks one of these weeks. I want to show you this match because it was awesome. Like, it was perfect because Terra Blast Fire was your way to tank a Sylveon. This was the kill leader in the whole league at this point. Um, but basically from the get-go, they can't handle the shocks. It's not doing one-shots all the time, but it's just so difficult to take out when I bulk it out and when I get rid of the Assault Vest. Um, yeah, I don't care. The, the two-shot's fine because doing 13... <laughs> um, yeah, like, it, it boosted itself, but it still wouldn't be enough. I was trying to live the uh, Medicham fighting move, but I didn't even need to because Shox got through it. Mousehold is, is pretty busted as well, getting a, a quick one shot on the Sylveon with Pop Bomb. Um, but they knew the electric attack was coming. 
I did 52. Would have been a one-shot right there, but they, they terrored to live. But the problem is it didn't save them, right? Shox is just exerting too much combination of offensive pressure and the ability to lift hits. Easy one-shot. They're just on their back for, from, the, from the beginning. And so Shox gets all four KOs. No, it got, got three of the KOs here and barely got touched. So... Um, you can't you can't deal with all of the threats that Sandy Shox poses at the same time. If it's clicking gravity on you, the game is very changed. Like your birds are struggling to earth powers after gravity. So I really do believe in this mon, um, but making this more universal, mons with strong ground moves are good. Strong mons with high overall stats and the ability to terra can become whatever they want to become good. So those are the kinds of mons that you want to draft. One of the other biggest imbalances that should really be affecting your Terra type choices is the fact that a lot of the best Pokemon in this game are weak to Fairy. This will be less the case when all the old Mons return, but it will still be the case. There's all of these pseudo legendaries that are in VGC 2023. New Dark type legendaries been introduced. A, a ton of great Fighting type Pokemon. If you're drafting great Pokemon, you're going to end up weak to Fairy. It like frequently is a problem, so it makes Fairy resist all that more important. There's not a lot of great Fairies uh, in the format yet, so you should probably be trying to draft one, but Terra Blast Fairy is going to be the one of the most common Terra Blasts. You should be using it. It will be used against you. So Mons that resist Fairy are important. Um, the problem is the few types that resist Fairy are Poison, Steel, Fire. They are all weak to ground, which is why you talk about ground, you talk about Fairy. If you've got both, then you've got a pretty unbeatable dual threat there. Um, you need a gifted double typing in order to resist both. Corviknight is very good in this gen. The, the the combination of your ability and typing is what you need to be able to resist both ground moves and fairy moves. And Terra does not save you from the fairy ground combo because uh, no single type, you, when you Terra, you become a single type, and no single type resists both. They need levitate or they need some amazing dual typing. So that's something you should be thinking about. Do I have strong ground moves? Do I also have strong fairy moves? Um, you can also still be using Terra Blast, but it would just be nice to have those on your own. And so maybe beating this dreaded fairy ground offensive combo relies not on resisting fairy, but resisting ground and at least going even with fairy. Grass types can do that for you, and it's one of the few reasons why your estimation of grass types should go way up more than any other type in this new generation. It's not about quantity of resists. If you want to resist the most stuff, become a steel type, but it's about quality of resists. Terra is the generation of situations, and grass is situationally very valuable. Um, as ground becomes more more and more common as a coverage move, that's a key resist. As all of these fishmons just obviously want to throw water moves at you, grass is a key resist. And then electric, it's a third quality resist there because lots of mons like to throw on Thunderbolt as a coverage move. Um, so, and, and of course, as we mentioned earlier, grass has the best inherent type gifts. Total immunity to spore, rage powder, leech seed. Amoongus' entire existence is threatened by mons becoming grass type. Um, so, even if you think about entire mons in their toolkits, like there are lots of physical attackers. Think of like a Mudsdale or a Marowak. They've got Earthquake and Rock Slide and Iron Head and Brick Break. They have no efficient way to get through grass types. So um, this is a time, this is a generation in which you're rewarded for seeing the entire game, see, predicting how it's going to play out and going, oh wow, they've got no way to beat my grass type. Even some of the new water types like a Dondozo and Tatsugiri, they have like Ice Fang and Icy Wind. That's all they have as anti-grass move, so it's like, take your best shot. Um, so, Steel type is not as good as a lot of us would have made it out to be as a Terra type. I mean, day in, day out, you want to be a Steel type, but you surprise them one turn by becoming Steel type. The next turn, they surprise you by Earthquake or Earth Power or Terra Blast Ground or Close Combat, for that matter. So these are some pretty crippling resistances. Um, in my previous draftables in Gen 8, um, I talked about why water types are so good. One of the reasons is why grass types suck. Yeah, day in, day out, grass types have lots of weaknesses, but you can usually see when those weaknesses are coming, and you're less likely to be surprised by Terra Blast Bug, Terra Blast Poison. I mean, it's possible, but it's just less likely than Terra Blast Ground. Um, and you don't want a Terra Blast to become an Ice type just to hit Grass types, right? It has offensive value, but very little defensive value. So you're less likely to see Bug Buzz and Sludge Bomb as coverage moves. Um, grass is a fairly consistent defensive typing when you can choose the time to become it. 
Speaking of what's on the rise in Generation 9, immunity abilities. Uh, with the combination of your ability plus the rationalization, you can create these mutant mon combinations that lose to basically nothing that Game Freak never intended to have a steel type or a grass type that's still totally immune to fire moves. Like Gastrodon's only weakness is grass and it becomes a fire type and then it still has no fear for water moves at all. All the levitate mons got way better in this generation. I can't wait to use my mascot Vikavolt when it returns because it can become a floating fire type, a floating steel type. Uh, really, really good combinations that don't have to fear ground moves at all. So, with everything in mind here, I think you understand why my new draft, Wet Future, is doing so well. It's not the best team I've ever drafted, but it does follow all the rules I've laid out here. Fairy Power plus Ground Power is a very, very difficult combination to beat. Um, water Power is a reliable defensive, offensive typing, and terra typing. And so you don't need to have everything. I don't have all the types. I have no Ghost. I have no Fire. Litleo doesn't count. I'm never bringing that. But I have enough things that you can't collectively cover for everything. Um, the best uh, defense against these three powerful types is grass, but I have anti-grass. I've got two very strong hurricane Pokemon. Um, I have a team that's finally not naturally weak to ground um, so that I can take advantage of Terrifier, so that I can click Earthquake with Garchomp and have good partners, three ground immunities there. Um, so I don't have everything, but I have enough that you can't cover for everything. Um, and in particular, I think fast, aggressive teams, if you didn't already believe in them, I believe you should go for them in the Terra generation because you put a strain, the threat of a lot of speed, and hit you hard with water, fairy, or ground. It forces your opponent to Terra before you have to, right? Because you're saying, like, I have, I have no way to resist these attacks unless I Terra Grass, and now they've given up information. They can never Terra Fire once they've already Terra Grassed. Um, so then now I can throw out my will o -Wisp. They can never uh, Terra Ghost to ignore Fake Out, and then I I can Terra to beat their Terra. And so aggressive teams, you don't have to use the aggression, but it puts your opponent in the position where they have to make tough choices and then your choices become easier. Also have a Levitate Pokemon. Levitate Electric, pretty nice. Uh, but my Terra choices cover for what I've been saying is good here. Ground is really good, and you should have good ground offense, like uh, Iron Jugulus Earth Power is one of its best moves, particularly with Terra Ground. Um, water, Grass, Fire, pretty hard to cover for all of them. Uh, and I've, so I'm taking my own advice. Terra Grass is something I've clicked more often than any, any others. I want to make sure that the do make my team too weak to... Uh, Ice moves. Ice moves is my biggest problem right now when I'm becoming a grass type. So I mix in water terras and fire terras so that I'm not too weak to that. So you don't need everything. You just need a package of threats that are collectively very hard to deal with. So on that note, making great Terra combinations means covering for that Mon's weaknesses, but also covering for that Mon's new weaknesses via its Terra. Arcanine Fairy is a very good Terra for it because it's naturally uh, very strong against the Steel types, so it covers for its own new weakness. Um, Hydreigon becomes a Poison type, and then it's only weak to Psychic, but it's naturally beating that with its Dark moves. And then our final example of this is our second and final showcase for the episode, uh, Pax Caliber. If you haven't seen it tearing up the lab, you will see it become a top tier in draft league. These stats are absolutely nuts, and this is a mod in the Terra era that can cover for all of its weaknesses very well. Um, look, look at these stats. These stats are nuts. Its worst stat is its speed, but it's faster than most Pokemon. Like it's far more min max than the, like Gudra. Like had random stats across the board, um, and it had random weird hard to use abilities. Where Baxcalibur is exactly what it needs to be: immune of strong physical attacker, immune to burns. Love it. Um, it has its signature dragon move that is super powerful and always hits. So the few things that are there to check Baxcalibur are fairy and steel. For fairies, enter Iron Head, and you can even Terra Steel it. Um, for steels, enter ground coverage. So um, very excellent to have ice because it's a very reliable attacking type and then not having to deal with being an ice type by becoming a different type. Pretty, pretty nice. This mod is just like a setup sweeping machine. It is a bulk lord. It is a killing machine. I can't wait to show you the sample sets just to see how versatile this mod is in the Terra era. 
when you're trying to beat these top tiers like Baxcalibur that have high overall stats, you can't assume that your super effective moves are enough in the age of terrestrialization. You gotta lead on the universals. Physical attackers do not like to be burned, they do not like to be intimidated. Well, Baxcalibur, ability makes it immune to burns, and if you give it clear amulet, it's also immune to intimidate. So this is a mine, it doesn't need a life orb or anything, it's already strong enough. Um, so you just make sure it does not get slowed down, protect, three strong attacks is all you need. Very, very good. Uh, this is a setup threat. If you see that there are a lot of mons faster than 87 base speed, but within 50% boost of that, then Dragon Dance makes you a fearsome setup sweeper in just one turn. Uh, Loaded Dice Icicle Spear gives you a always hitting very strong ice move. Can be worth it, and particularly when the few ice resists out there are like water types, they get beat up by Terra Electric. This is uh, a Jamie Boyd set that I stole, by the way, um, but ice plus electric is notably very reliable coverage, and a defensive Terra here. When you've already got all the, the numbers you need, you just want to not have a lot of weaknesses. Electric only weak to ground, and ground mons get beat up by uh, Icicle Spear here. So I like that you frequently have such a strong offensive threat with two moves that Protect is available to you. But if you want to just be so bulky that nothing can remove you quickly, the Assault Vest, the Physical Defense Investment can be good, Breaking Swipe to stop their physical offense. If you don't want the high risk, high reward nature of Glaive Rush, um, Breaking Swipe is stab um, damage, so pretty nice. And it's spread, um, if you want to do a lot of damage, still having like something like Icicle Crash can be good, if you want to make sure you go first, having a priority move can be good. Uh, water coverage can be good, especially when you're becoming a water type to boost it. Um, very, very strong defensive typing for a mon that's already got what everything it needs to stick around and live hits. So then, this is the full range of options, right? <laughs> Virtually nothing is walling a choice band glaive rush with the option to tear a dragon. It's fairy types, end of list, right? Things that already have multiple iron defenses. Nothing is is, is taking these hits very well. Um, and then the fairy types, I guess you beat them with the rest of your team. Earthquake is pretty solid here. I think, you know, ground coverage we already talked about. I'm still having the option to clean up everything from the back with a banded priority move. Um, this is a mon that when you build creatively, nothing is walling it, nothing is removing it quickly, um, nothing can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. even if it tries to scale, backs can scale just as hard with the Dragon Dance. So what a mon in the Terra era. My last theory slide for the day, in a world where types can change, you should focus on the universals, the things that don't change in this game, which is big numbers are better than little numbers, right? You should be investing in quality pieces. I think more top-heavy drafts are the way to go in this generation because you can just make mons whatever they need to be with terrestrialization. You can run Garchomp into a hail team uh, and beat them with Terrifier anyway. So damage control is also very reliable. So even if Baxcalibur has a way to deal with burns, it doesn't like you setting up a reflect in front of it. Most physical attackers struggle to intimidate, most special attackers str struggle to snarl, regardless of which type they become. And so lastly, you want strong stab moves. Use that 50% boost. When you're not sure where you're hitting, a stab close combat is still gonna do a bunch of damage, even into a resistance, so most of your attackers should have a strong stab move. Let's bring it all together. Let's talk about two of the most successful teams so far in the new season of the VBL, one of the most competitive draft leagues, uh, Steve and Electric. Hope they don't mind me dropping some ideas in the pot because they're not gonna play each other until grand finals if they make it anyway. So it's time to use everything you've learned about terrestrialization in Draft League to come up with big brain Terra type plus Mon combinations that beat what those Mons are weak to, that beat what your overall team is weak to, um, that cover for what your opponent is likely to bring and what that causes you to bring and what that causes them to bring, etc. I would be curious, comment with some interesting sets um, that might help Electric or Steve win this hypothetical matchup. If they do end up playing, I'm sure they'll come up with totally different but cool ideas. I'll throw a few into the pot, um, which is... Um, Electric has to consider that he is naturally weak to ghost, dark, and fairy moves, and so he's fighting Steve team, but he's also fighting random ghost and fairy types, because those are likely to be among Steve's Terra options. Same as Steve being a weak to uh, grass in particular, so he needs to assume that Terra grass is in Electric's options. Um, here's a good example, like Terra grass on Tauros, I think could be good, because uh, Steve has two uh, Electric options here. Uh, so they become to beat the water type 
Arctoros, but then Grass now resists it. And then Grass still has plenty of weaknesses to Volcarona, to Glaceon, but Tauros' natural gifts allow it to beat those mons like Wave Crash right onto Volcarona or Close Combat right onto Glaceon. So I think it can kind of cover for both here and be just like a generally good attacker. Um, Meanwhile, Electric's team, if you look at some of the numbers, he's got more special attackers than physical attackers, or at least he needs to wind up his physical attackers for them to be scary. So um, you want specially bulky Pokemon. He's got a Sloking. He's got a Bronzong. And I also don't see Electric having a lot of ground coverage. He's got a Dugtrio, which is something, but not a lot of Earth powers or anything. So you can run Mons that are defensively good and their main weakness is ground. If he needs to... Terra Ground, Terra Blast in order to hit you hard, then you're getting ahead at least on that information war. Um, so, and also he's got multiple floating Pokemon, so like if they Terra Electric, then they have no weaknesses, and as well as a pretty good typing, as well as hitting a couple of uh, electric water types with an electric blast, for example. Um, Slowking, as a good special wall, can deal with their whole special um, attacking core just by being its bulky self. If you gave it an assault vest and then you gave it the moves to beat their physical attackers, then both ways you're kind of covering. Uh, I think uh, like a Terra Electric Slowking or a Terra Poison Slowking could be really, really strong. Let's go one level deeper. In a vacuum, Glaceon's very strong here because it's got an ice move that's good against these three, but Freeze Dry in particular from Glaceon is also good against water types, these two. So Freeze Dry is good against five of Electric Mons and only resisted by two, so you just bring a Shadow Ball as a coverage move. Um, in particular, you have to be thinking about Electric side, beating Glaceon means using his best Pokemon, Golden Go, and using its best move, Make It Rain, a very strong Steel move. So you want a Terra that resists Steel in particular. Terra Fire would be good, also resisting Glaceon's other problem, which is Rotom uh, Heat. And so these two, it seems like it's bad to be an Ice type that becomes a Fire type because they're both weak to Rock. However, Steve doesn't have a lot, or Electric doesn't have a lot of Rock type coverage. It's just Tauros and Dugtrio, no Rock types naturally. And then if you really, like they're both physical attackers, you should just give this thing physical defense or give it Hail. That gives it a major physical defense uh, boost. So... Glaceon naturally beats those two, by the way, with its freeze dry, so uh, I think this could be pretty good. What Electric is good at doing, which would be good in the matchup, is his normal type boom bursters. So he becomes Terra normal, and then he blows away everything. His only steel resist is Bronzong. You can bring Grimmsnarl to hit that hard, and also Grimmsnarl can bring Fake Out because they have no ghost type, nothing to be immune to Fake Out here. Um, also, they. Uh, Grimmsnarl as a prankster type to disrupt Steve's team. There's only one of Steve's mons that is dark type that would make it immune to prankster, but her dragon gets really, really messed up by uh, Grimmsnarl's attacks. Its fairy type attacks would be a one shot. So this is a very, very potent combo against Steve's team in particular. That said, Steve could be bringing ghost types. That would be his, his answer to the normal type boom burst spam. But also, uh, Basculin becomes very strong at whatever type it becomes with its adaptability. So ghost type Basculin would be a major glass cannon to rip a hole through Electric's team. Uh, Glaceon has Shadow Ball, as I said earlier, so that would be good against Golden Go. It would also cause it to resist uh, Tauros's close combats. So there's an element of chaos here. Um, if Electric brings a normal type, it should be really good, but if Steve brings a ghost type, then it'll be who's who's got the dark types, who's got the fighting types to beat those things. So you could say that it's more chaotic in the age of terrestrialization, but I really do like this mechanic. I think it's a thinking man's mechanic mechanic uh, because you need to get inside your opponent's head. Not I need to not only beat the thing in front of me, but the thing that it's likely to, be, to become as the game develops. How are they going to use their Terras? What are they thinking is good against your team, and how do I beat that? Um, so... I assume some people are going to be like, where's the tier list? This is highly reductive, but I'll offer it to y'all. These are the Terra types I think are generally more often viable. All the Terra types have value, except arguably Psychic. I don't see why you run Terra Psychic. But uh, knowing this is a very different landscape than Generation 8, you're going to be seeing more ground types than you saw before because of Terra Ground. You're going to see more Terra Grass. You're not going to see a lot of Terra Steel, despite Steel types still being good. Um, and at least Ice Moves, you're going to see some surprise ground moves all the time, but you're not going to be seeing a lot of surprise ice moves because becoming an ice type I still think is a highly risky proposition. So, 
Uh, yes, your immediate threats are allow you to win the information war. Um, y- your ability to force your opponent to Terra and then have an answer to that Terra is going to help you win this game. Terra is so fun. Like, if you haven't been playing Gen 9 Draft Leagues, if you haven't been playing any kind of competitive Pokemon, this is the way to play. Gen 9 VGC Draft League. I have a link to our Discord in the description. Maybe check that out. But for the rest of you, have a nice day.